Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Guys, let's do something awesome. Y'all stay tuned. So the one, two, three paper purse was a big hit and a couple of you asked if I could do a slight modification to that to make it into a clutch because we're heading into prom season, wedding season, and having a small clutch to carry would be so beneficial. So that's what I decided I would do today. And here is one of the clutches that I've made. And guys, this is so stinking cute. It is six inches long by two inches deep and three and a half inches high. And what I love about it, first of all, I love this Tiffany blue paper with the baked in glitter. So I'm not a big glitter person. And the reason why is I don't like the way it comes off in my hands. Well, with this paper, the glitter is baked in. So none of it comes off. I bought this paper, I believe at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I've had it for about two years. So I don't remember exactly which one it was, but you can find this paper all over the place but here's what I really love. You see that little fox on there. He is so stinking cute. And then I blinged him out with some gems that I got from AC Moore, but I just love how this looks. And this really is one of those upscale little clutches that you see women carrying all the time. Clutches don't have to be plain and boring. This one can truly go to any high-end nighttime function and pass for boutique quality. It is so, so adorable. And we're going to make something very similar to this, but I'm going to open it up and show you guys. Again, I have my magnets placed on the outside because it's just the easiest way to do it, especially when I'm doing the quick tutorials like this. And you can see that we have plenty of room on the inside to put all the things that we women like to carry. So, And this is a perfect little bag to carry to those special events where we might shed a tear or two and put some tissues in, put our lip gloss in, um, just little things. So let's get started on making it. All right guys, so to make today's clutch, I am going to be using paper from the Craft Consortium and I will be using paper from the Bloom Beautiful Collection. As you guys know, I love all collections by the Craft Consortium, but I thought this one is a gorgeous collection. This one, English Garden, um, they are gorgeous collections for um, prom purses or bridal showers, anything like that. They have such pretty papers in them that just lend themselves to this type of crafting. And the paper that I'm using for this is this one. And it's got the silver metallic throughout and it is beautiful. And here is the flip side. So this will make a great liner for the purse. So of that paper, I have a piece that measures five and three quarters by four. I have a piece that measures eight by 12 and a piece that measures nine and seven eighths by nine. So we're going to start by making the box and we will be using our nine and seven eighths by nine inch piece of paper. And on the nine inch side, we are going to score at three and a half and then at five and a half. We'll rotate it to the nine and seven eighths side and we're going to score at two. Rotate it again to the opposite end and score at two. So now we can put our box together. And one thing that you guys might notice that I just did is I actually scored on the wrong side of the paper. I should have scored on the side that I want facing out. And that helps to minimize the risk of cracking, but it doesn't look like I'm going to have that problem with this paper so it worked out but other normally I would have placed my scores on this side so now what I'll do is I'm going to come back in and I have these sections here so I need to cut up to the first score mark to get my tabs so I'll just go up and drag down And then I'll simply angle in. 
and then I am going to remove just a little bit of this. And some of you have asked where I get the replacement blades for my finger cutter. I'll link that in the description box. So let's do the same thing over here. So I'm going to drag down. And angle cut in. And now I will just cut down some of that because I really don't need all of that. Now we can put this together. So all I'm going to do is place my glue on my tab. And I am using reptile glue and for, when I make bags I like to make mine using glue instead of tape because for me I find that it holds better but you guys can certainly use tape if you want. So all I'll do is go on the inside here and just get that nice and stuck. I'll come over to the opposite side and repeat that process. So once we have the back glued, we can come in and just place our glue along my edges. So I can make sure that I have a nice stick on the edges and then I'll fill in the middle. And when I glue this together, my goal is to make sure that it's nice and even at the top, just like that. So now we have our box and I am going to set this to the side and we'll make the shell. So to make the shell, we are going to need some chipboard pieces. I have a piece that measures one and a half by six, a piece that measures two by six, and two pieces that measure three and five eighths by six. Okay, so I'll bring in my piece that measures eight and a half by 12, and on the 12 inch side, I am going to take one of my three and five eighths by six inch pieces and place it down. And I'm just going to give myself just enough to be able to fold over. So I probably have about three eighths of an inch right there. And then I'll bring in my two by six inch spine and place it down using an eighth of an inch in spacing. And I'll place my other three and five eighths by six inch piece using one eighth of an inch in spacing. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is place my one and a half by six inch piece. But this time I am going to give myself more spacing. So I'm giving myself about a quarter of an inch in spacing between this one and this one because I just want that extra space so that the flap can go back and forth very easily. So now I'll just fold over my edges place some tape down, come back and we'll miter cut. All right, so I have my tape all around the edges and now all I need to do is come back and simply miter cut my edges. And then I'll just stand it up and fold this over. And I'll do this on all four sides. So once I have it folded over, I'll use my bone folder to get that nice and straight. I'll go along the edges and I'll repeat this process on all four sides. All right, so now that I have my edges folded over, I went ahead and placed some tape on the end that has the one and a half by two inch flap, and I just placed it down almost towards the end of the first big panel here. You don't have to go that far. This is really just to cover up this area here that will show, and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So what I'm doing now is just taking glue, going along the edge, And then I'll take this piece and place it right here just so that when you open up the purse and you're looking at the flap, you will be looking at a beautiful inside. I'll use my paper towel just to spread that glue down. And I'll use my bone folder to really work it in. So now we have this, we can take our box and just place it on the inside like that and it'll look just like this. So at this point I'll bring in my refill bottle of glue because I like how quickly and how much of the glue comes out at once and I am just going to go all around this giving it a nice coating of glue and I know that this is driving a certain bread 
crazy and he will know who he is the amount of glue that he sees me using but it's not as much as you think Brad so then I'll just place it down on that two by six spine making sure that I've got it nice and even then when it looks like I have it where I want it I'm going to bring up the sides just to make sure that everything is nice and even I'll press down and then I'll just start working that glue in and it really is this simple guys one two three simple as can be So as you can see, that's going to be gorgeous. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my glue and I am going to place my glue on the body of the bag and just give it a good coating of glue and then we'll get it stuck down. And then once we've got the glue on it, let's just take this piece, roll it over onto its side Come on the inside with the bone folder and let's get a very good stick on this guys and then once you think you have it then let's fold this back just a little bit and we'll do the same thing over here we'll place our glue it's very important that we have a good stick on this and then I'll fold this piece up just like this and I'll do the same thing. I'll come back with my bone folder and go on the inside, getting a real nice and tight stick. And now we have a purse. So I'll just start pinching in on the sides. And you can see just how good those sides look. And then my flap will come over the top just like that. And because I've given myself that extra space, I'm pretty good to go. So now you can see just how gorgeous it is going to be to carry this as a little clutch. Isn't this just darling? So now at this point, I want to place my magnets. And I am going to be using two millimeter by eight millimeter magnets. And I am simply going to place just a little glue on the back. figure out where I want these magnets to stick. So I'll close it again and just kind of see. And I want my magnet sitting fairly close to the bottom so that it can really catch the lid as it comes down. So that's a good placement for that. And I'll do the same thing on this one. You can actually place your magnets underneath the paper, but I decided to place mine on top of the paper because I don't mind how it looks and for some of you who might not have that much experience with placing magnets underneath paper and trying to match up the top, I thought this might be the easiest way to go. So with your magnets placed, you really need to allow this time to dry so that your magnets will not pull up when you put um, the other magnets on. These magnets are very strong. So I'll have a link in the description box for these magnets. You need to really let them dry. And as a matter of fact, I am going to let this dry for a couple of hours before I even place the top magnets because these magnets are so strong that if the glue isn't completely hardened and the magnet isn't completely stuck, when I put these on and then I lift open the top, it's going to rip everything off. Trust me, I've had it happen. So I am really going to give this some good drying time. And then when I come back, we'll be ready to go ahead and place the other two magnets so that we can close this beautiful clutch. Okay guys, so my magnets are all dry and my bag is just so beautiful. Look at that, we can get a lot down in there. And so when I close this on the front, I have the most adorable, adorable bird. It is just decked out in rhinestones. Got it at um, Hobby Lobby. They are 50% off this week. And I thought he would make such an upscale, elegant statement to this bag. And I applied this bird using some um, hot glue because my reptile glue, I needed 
glue that was going to give me some clump and reptile glue would not do that because there are a whole bunch of um, crevices and whatnot on this that I needed to make sure were filled in with a thick glue that would dry hard and thick and that's exactly what this particular glue does. So the next thing that I want to do is I am going to just bling this out just a little more and I am going to add just a couple of my decorative rhinestones to this. So I'll place a glue dot, bring in my stones, use my little jewel pick here and just place it down just like that. And I'm doing this just because I like that added um, glittery look. So I'll place one right here, one right here. And then I'll grab two more and place them down. Then I'm going to take a look to make sure those are straight enough for me. And they are, and I really do like how this looks, guys. This is just so pretty. And I wanted to share just a very quick tip about the jewel pick. The stickiness will wear off after a while on both ends of it. One way to regain the stick is just to take some sticky tape and just go along. And then that helps you to get the stickiness back on your little pick. And then you'll be able to keep picking up those gems just as you need to. So we don't have to go out and replace it. We just need to re-stick it with some tape. So I am going to bring this back in and show you guys just how cute it is. My gems are dry and I am going to try to hold it up so y'all can see just how fantastic this little clutch bag is. So guys, I am going to bring the other one back in and you can see just how fantastic these are. We are able to take our papers and customize accessories based on what we need that day or that event. We don't have to run to the store and try to find the perfect bag to match that outfit because you know what? Hand into your craft space and make it. So I know that you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with this. I know that each and every one of you can do this because it's so simple. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.